All right, what is going on, everyone? Welcome to Laptop Empires. This is episode number 17, and I've got my good friend Sean McCabe here. Sean, what is going on? Hey, good to be here, Brian. Thanks well, for having me. Yeah, absolutely. So Sean is the founder of SeanWest.com, uh, and they teach you over there how to basically build an audience that builds your business. So why don't you tell us a little bit about that, Sean? Yeah, so we help people build and grow an audience-driven business at Sean West. And we're, we're very passionate about uh, community, you know, building a, a community, a community around the thing that you're doing, your business, because I think if you have a community, uh, it, that can be your differentiator. You never have to start from scratch again. You got people who can support you. They're going to buy again and again. And it, it differentiates you from competitors, too. So someone else is looking at someone that does something similar to you, but you've got this thriving community around what you do and so that that that's going to attract people to you so that's that's really what we're passionate about is helping people build up an audience and uh everything around you know content production content marketing and things like that i love that man and we're going to get into all of that today um so now when you say audience are you saying you know because some people might think oh i have to build an email list or some might think a facebook group but when you say community you know what does that mean to you well, I guess I would differentiate between audience and community. Um, mainly, we focus on helping people build an audience, and then I think you can you can turn that audience into a community. But they are different things because an audience is one to uh, it's one to many, but a community. I'm sorry, am I getting that right? Yeah, yeah, one yeah, to yeah. many versus many to many, right? You know, right. like people can talk to each other, whereas you are broadcasting to your audience, and that's cool. And uh, that can be really helpful for building your business, but it's also cool to get people that you attract to talk to each other. You know, then it becomes something more like a movement. Yeah, it's it's strange that it took me so long to realize the power of Facebook groups, um, but recently, you know, I've been involved in a lot more of those, and it's incredible what you know a community like that of people can do, and how much you can learn so quickly from other people. Yeah, for sure. Uh, that's that's really where everything we started doing was. Uh, taking off is when we we built our community and the people that we had attracted through things like a podcast and you know right. videos and blog posts they were able to talk to each other and uh, that's kind of where everything escalated. Yeah. So where do you host your community? If I'm not um, mistaken, you have your own private label like website, right, for this community? Yeah. So we built uh, a custom system. It's called Community Talk. Uh, it's not yet available, but we've been working on it for several years. We we built our own propri proprietary nice. system that has really been the glue to our membership site. And we realized uh, this could help a lot of people who are kind of shoehorning different things together and their members are juggling four or five different logins to access everything. You know, this it, it's got like live streaming built in. You can have your show schedule. People can ask questions. You know, it, right. it, it's pretty cool. Yeah, so I want so I love that you said years because I want to you know set the expectation for people watching this. You know, most a lot of people and you see in ads and a lot of people spend a lot of money on ads. They claim they, I made this much money in the last six or twelve months, but this is a process, man. It takes time, especially to build a community like that. It's not going to happen overnight. For sure. I mean, for me, you know, going back super far, I, I uh, was creating art every day, hand lettering, drawing letters by yeah, hand. Yeah. And I was posting every single day, you know, like like you're supposed to. And yep. for the first two years, no one really noticed or cared. You know, it it really did take showing up for a number of years to even get on people's radars. Yeah. Yeah. I think a lot of people, you know, miss that. They just see a lot of people online um, and they don't realize they've been making content for years. And you know, I will say that you are one of the people, a few people that I know personally that makes way more content than most people online. So... No, hats off to you, man, for doing that. Oh, thanks, man. I I I look to people who are super prolific. You know, thinking of like the Casey Neistats of the video world. You know, just like making daily yeah. vlogs and stuff. It's like, wow, that's so crazy. Uh, and and it kind of feels like he came out of nowhere and he's this big thing. But I mean, he was doing videos for like eight years before yeah. he became this kind of more of a sensation. Like I I'm not like OG or anything, but I remember <laughs> following him just like maybe like two to three years ago on YouTube and he had a couple hundred thousand subscribers, right. like not even in the millions, you know, but it took yeah. him 
eight years, nearly a decade to get to that point. Like it's so much goes into setting up what might look like an overnight success. Yeah. And I think, you know, that's definitely you know, tip number one is for people wanting to build a community, make sure you're in it for the long game and you know, have those expectations set up front. So what would you say to people who are just starting out to maybe, you know, overcome some of the challenges you face to maybe not have to take as long as, you know, other people who just had to learn for themselves? For sure. Um, so someone just starting out, I, I mean, we have to acknowledge that like the notion of building an audience for yourself is a little bit selfish, mm -hmm. uh, but the way that you get there can't be through serving yourself. It right. has to be about giving people what they're looking for helping them, investing in them. Um, and so I would say, think about the people you want to reach and what are they looking for rather than just putting your message out there. Like, what is it that they want? Maybe, maybe you have something for them. Maybe you think you know what they need, but if they don't recognize what they want, they're not going to pay attention. So you've, you've got to package up what they need because you know, as the expert, you got to package it up like in Christmas wrapping paper in a package of what they want already. Right. And I, you know, a good tip that I actually heard when you're researching what your audience wants is to just kind of, you know, of course, get involved in Facebook groups, but also kind of lurk in those groups and see what questions people ask most. And also not only that, but the questions they ask that get the most engagement because you see that someone really hit a pain point there. And then of that community really wants to know about that thing. Yeah, that's a great tip. Uh, I like that lurking, you know, just paying attention. <laughs> Got to be a better um, word for it. <laughs> yeah, no, it, it's a good word. But I would say another way of thinking of it is like open up your second set of eyelids. Like you're going through your life, you're looking at things, you're observing things, but really most people are focused on their own problems. Yeah. You know, we've we've all got enough of our own problems. Very few people, only entrepreneurs really think about other people's problems. You know, That's like we're, we're, we're going through life observing, listening, looking, you walk out your front door, you're going to see, you know, lawns that aren't mowed, you know, leaves that aren't raked up, dogs that aren't walked. Like you're going to see problems in the world if you look for them, if you if you open up your second set of eyelids. Yeah, yeah. I, I know, man, a lot of people miss that. But it's cool. I like that uh, because as an entrepreneur myself, too, it's you, you help people, but almost I know some in like say, um, nonprofit space, they do it you know, for sure for other people in, in other ways. But, you know, people like us, our content is almost our way to give back. And it's weird. I don't really look at it like that, you know, but it's nice when you get start to get messages from people who are like, dude, you your content changed my life or you helped me more in two minutes than anyone else has. And, you know, then you start to realize you're starting to make that little bit of an impact. So I like that momentum because it does take time to get there. When you feel that bit of momentum, it's, it's pretty powerful and you want to keep pushing. And then that it snowballs really. Yeah, it's it's so cool to hear that stuff. I mean, I I'd mentioned I was in I was in art, you know, drawing, lettering. I right. eventually started pursuing that myself as a freelancer, you know, working with big clients and making great money, selling my own products and eventually teaching other people how to do that cuz so many so many artists are starving artists. They they don't understand the business skills they need to survive in the world. Uh, but like I knew that stuff, like I had worked right. in client services for many years before that. And so I had the missing piece, you know, how to price your work, how to work with design contracts and client communication. And so helping people with that, like really bridge the gap from what they learned at college or school or really didn't learn and, and what they right. needed to succeed in the real world. But, you know, to your point, um, I, I made great money in that space. Like I, I spent 9,000 hours getting good at a skill, making great money for myself, help, helping other people. Um, but, you know, I started sharing the results of that because I had this learn lettering course do really, really well. Right. It, it made like six figures in the first three days of launching. And, you know, it kind of like it not only shocked me, I had no idea like it was going to do that well, but uh, <laughs> I would love to, that would be a great wondering. shock. That's a nice surprise. Oh yeah. I was like, I'll make maybe a few thousand bucks, you know? And it was just like, Phew. and well, yeah. people were like, how, how did you, how did you, uh, how did you launch it to such, you know, such a response? And I kind of just started sharing like, well, I tried this uh, and this is what worked or this is what didn't work. And you know, just I just made this a, a theme of iterating in public. Like, here is what's working, and I'm sharing this stuff. Right. And you know, podcasting about it, and like things are, things are like 
in my mind related to my niche of art, but other people were listening in different industries and saying, this applies to me. Like I can apply this in other areas and started to realize like, wow, like this approach to business, you know, kind of relationship marketing, reciprocity, giving first and then selling. Um, it, it really works in a lot of industries. And, uh, you know, like you said, you hear messages like that from people saying, uh, you know, what you've shared has, has helped me quit my soul sucking day job. Yeah. I can, I can do what I love. I've been able to start a business and like that is just so fulfilling to me. Yeah, it really is because I, I recognize what that actually feels like because I did the same thing. You know, I was delivering pizzas and I was a tour guide for three years while I was trying to get my business off the ground. And like that, like shift did so much for me and my confidence and what I thought I could go out and get. And, you know, I don't think I could do that without a community around me of learning from other people and seeing other people do it too, you know? Yeah, that's that's so true. Like everyone has given so much. I've learned so much from other people that I kind of learned from them to just share what I know, yeah. you know, teach as I'm going for sure. And, um, you know, just just share the stuff. And I, I so I started like um, uh, the very first episode of my podcast. We're now 322 episodes in. Nice. Uh, we we did this episode on what I call um, the overlap technique. And uh, overlapping is this concept of going from where you are, you know, maybe it's in a day job you don't like to doing this thing that you enjoy on the side and, and turning that side passion into a successful business. But it's not this thing where you quit your job, you take a leap and you hope for the best. Like I, I'm too practical for that. Yeah. Like I wanted yeah, no something, uh, something more like this is a, a, an approach or a system that works, you know, and the, my idea was you stay in the day job, cover your bills, create that financial foundation for yourself from which you overlap. And in your nights and weekends, your spare you know, time on the side, you build up this thing. And yeah. so ne you're never at this point where, um, you know, what, what you're passionate about is very fragile in the beginning. You know, it's like a young tree, like a young sapling. And if you're <laughs> you're wanting to like rest your weight against this tree uh, it's just going to break, you know, it's not, yeah. it, it's not strong enough to support you yet, but so many people, they want to make that leap. Like I want to make a living from my passion. And so they, they take the leap, they jump, they quit the day job and then they're like, okay, I need to make money. And they start getting desperate. They start getting yep. in scarcity and they're like, I got to take on whatever jobs I can get. And the next thing you know, they're working with clients they don't want to work with that they should have said no to, but because they were desperate for the money, they said yes and they end up killing the passion. And, you know, once you kill it, you, you, you go back, yeah, I got to find a job again. And you tell yourself this story that like, you know, I tried it and it didn't work out. And like, then you really end up stuck. Yeah. And, and so I'm like, I, I want to help people avoid this. But I, I had started writing this book overlap a couple years ago. And I realized 20,000 words into it, I was writing the book that I wanted to write like with what I thought, you know, people needed. And it wasn't the book that, that they, that they necessarily wanted to hear. And it didn't address their real struggles. You know, there's like all these business books that are like, all right, step one, you know, choose your business model. But like after, after putting this on the back burner and saying, I'm going to think about this more, I'm going to talk more to people in my audience. And, and over the next several years have hundreds of conversations with people I'm trying to help. I realized there were these real struggles that no one was talking about. Like, my family doesn't believe in me. You know, um, yeah. they're not on board. Um, no, seriously, like, those are deep, steep challenges. And, you know, this is yeah. one of the reasons why I wanted to have you on the show. Um, you're one of very few people who will not go and create something before you've understood, or maybe you had in the past, but now at least you know, with your sketching course, or I'm sorry, what uh, can you describe what that is again? The, oh. Uh, hand lettering, hand lettering, hand lettering course, right? You had that community, you had been podcasting and building up interest and gauging what their pain points were before you went and launched something. Um, you know, like digital products are so sexy nowadays. You see people in these Facebook groups, like 
building products than asking how they can profitably run Facebook traffic to it. Like they ask me these questions, and I haven't even done that yet, but the first thing I say is you need to go like validate that first and see what your conversion rates even are, or you're just gonna throw money at Facebook and not make anything. And again, like they said, kind of what you did with one of your first products you were mentioning, or that book, you kind of did it based on what you thought they needed, not what they actually did. And I'm guilty of that as well. Um, you know, two of my three products that I have right now, not huge, but I didn't really validate the idea. And I sold a couple copies. They've worked well, and I've used them as bonuses for other things. Um, but, you know, I, I probably should have validated that idea a little better. So now I'm working on a new project. I'm not going to do anything until I get 100 people to tell me exactly what they struggle with most. You know, I picked that up out of, uh, out of this book, by the way. But, you know, it's smart. Nice. You, you got to have a group of people tell you what they want before you go do something. For sure. And it helps definitely having a community because, you know, you're, you're engaging with people and you're, it's a two-way street. You're getting feedback, uh, lots of meetups, lots of conferences. I, I definitely, definitely recommend getting in person with people, having an actual face-to-face -face conversation. It's just so huge. I mean, I think like now the book is almost completely different from what I originally set out to write because it's now reading the mind of the person who's reading it. You know, right. it's like, oh, wow. Like, yeah, my my wife or my husband doesn't believe in me. And like, here I am trying to like push forward. But uh, for lack of a better term, it's like, I've got this dead weight, you know, and it's like, no, you, you gotta, you gotta invest in them. You gotta get them on board first. Like, it doesn't matter if you succeed and make it to your destination when the person who's most important to you in your life isn't on board. Like, yeah. it, it's, it's not going to be great. Like, that's not where you want to be. Uh, but realizing it's not about just Yes, the book does talk about like how to build up multiple streams of income and make money from clients and selling products and marketing. But um, it's the stuff like I feel like I don't have enough time in the day or I'm, I'm overwhelmed by all of the possibilities. Like I've got all these ideas of things I could yeah. do, but which is the right one? And and how do I pick that? And once I do, how do I stay focused? And so I wanted to really answer the questions that I found a lot of people had and you know, it, it helped being in person with a lot of people. But I would say even if you can't get in person with the people you're trying to reach, uh, I really like the struggle question. And what yeah. I do is I, I'll put that in my welcome email. So when yep. someone signs up, it's like, hey, you know, and it's even better if you segment, you know, up front, like, what are you working on? Have a few options. Right. And based on what they choose, the welcome email says, what's your biggest struggle with X? Yep. And you invite them to hit reply on the email and I mean, if you have the capacity, like have a dialogue, have some back and forth. But at the very least, you know, you've got the just filter it, put a label in your Gmail and you've got this database of struggles that people have. And like, there you go. There's where you source all of your content. from. Yeah. And, and again, you can go back to those people who shared that with you and then get them in on a webinar or a pre-sale or whatever you're going to do for a product. Um, and then I think the beauty also of when you can get people to share those struggles in a community on Facebook is, you know, so a lot of other people will for sure have those questions, maybe are too afraid to ask or whatever it might be. You are answering and establishing credibility in public pretty much. You know, one-on-one -on -one messaging is great, um, but that Facebook group in a community, everyone sees it and benefits from it. You know, it's a it, it, you know, it's one so to many huge. again. Right. And it's so huge because many of those people, like you said, they haven't even oftentimes they haven't even articulated that they have the same struggle. Mm -hmm. Like some people have verbalized it, but like, you know, out of the one that verbalizes it, there's 10 others that have felt it and they've never even articulated it. So when you say, when you're describing how they feel and what they're going through, they're just like, wow, you are really reading my mind. Yeah. And again, another, I'm sure you know, this a great copywriting hack is to use their own words in your copy literally use their verbiage and put that in there because that's what they say. That's the pain point. Like you said, yep. some people can't even verbalize what they might be feeling. Um, but when someone else says it, they're like, oh my God, like, yes. I, my, one of my most popular blog posts was a copy paste of what someone said, their sentence. And it literally is in quotes. It says, too many people already do what I want to do. Right. And it resonated so strongly with everyone because the, everyone's thinking that everyone's worried about that. Everyone's concerned about it. Yeah, for sure, man. So uh, I, let's um, you know, back to the importance of a community. Now, you, you said you built this community um, before your 
first product, the hand lettering one. Um, doesn't have to probably be like, like for me, I'm going to 100. I want to get 100 people's feedback before I go. What would you say someone, you know, might need to hit some kind of threshold maybe before they start to go pre-sell or validate a product? You know, because some people want to start a Facebook group and they give up after 10 people or they think that's enough, but some people have 20,000 members and they've never even thought about validating a product, you know? So where would you say, you know, that might be a nice threshold? I mean, they say average conversion rates are, you know, hovering around 2%, but it's, it's all kind of relative, you know, because what is the, what's the pool of people that you have in the first place? You know, how, how targeted are they? Right. Um, I mean, if you have a hundred people and a hundred of them are customers, like awesome. Right. Uh, that's, that's good news. But, uh, I, I would, I would give this tip, uh, the lead magnet defines the prospect. So, you know, a lead magnet is a, a gift or incentive that you offer some kind of download for people to sign up for your email list. It works right. way better than saying sign up for my newsletter. So you're giving them something. And I think a, a mistake a lot of people make is they find a lead magnet that converts well. They're just looking at the numbers like, oh man, 20% sign up, 40% sign up, something right. crazy, you know. But here's the thing, the, the, the lead magnets that tend to convert the best and it's all relative to the kind of traffic you're driving, right. right? But it's the ones that tend to be more broad, you know, like have a great life and make people love you. You know, I'm, I'm sure <laughs> a lot of people want that and they might download it. But what do you know about that group? You know, they're a human and not a dog, right? Like, right. There's not really that much that you know about them. But the more specific you go with that lead magnet, if it's very, very specific, you know, how to repair your own tennis racket with this DIY kit in five minutes, you know. Right wow, that is specific. And at first you're kind of afraid because like, well, I'm, I'm tuning all of these people out. But what you, what you have is this group of people who are definitely tennis players, definitely DIY people. They've, they've bought a racket. So you know yeah. they're spending money on, <laughs> on tennis. You know, you, you know so much about them and all of your messaging can be so tailored. So I, I think I would say don't be afraid to go super specific because the more specific you go, the higher likelihood there is that they're going to buy something related. Yeah, and I've also heard a great tip would be to use um, a lead magnet, a specific group of people who downloaded that one lead magnet as your uh, pre-sell group or your validation group. You can go through and say, hey, you guys, because you did this specific thing, I want to ask you this specific question about it. Yeah, I really do like uh, early access or beta pilot groups going through and just refining things, yeah. you know, it's, it's much better to do that with a small group, work out the kinks and then scale it up. Yeah. My Facebook group doesn't know this yet, but they're going to get a nice surprise. I'm going to do my entire course for free for all the people in there just wow. to do that. Um, get their feedback, get testimonials and stuff before I go out and actually, you know, do webinars and partnerships and stuff like that. That's awesome. So what would you say, um, you as a community manager need to do to keep the community engaged, you know, excited, involved, and things like that? That's a great question. Um, well, if it's always, I'm going to assume that, you know, if someone's listening to this, they're, they might have found themselves wearing the community manager hat, but they're probably also the business owner. Yep. They maybe started this That's thing. Me. <laughs> they maybe probably should be the CEO. Um, and that's okay. You know, you started this, you are going to end up being the community manager at some point, but I think really quickly you need to start to delegate, you know, you need to start to have someone else become that community manager and, uh, you know, maybe, maybe find someone you feel like would be a good fit, but, uh, it doesn't have to be someone who's already in the group, but I would say definitely look at, there's always going to be these certain people who are very invested very loyal. They're answering questions. You know, for some reason, they're just like, they're all in, they're all about it. Yeah. Um, consider, you know, even if they're not the manager, like consider promoting them in a sense, you know, consider giving them some kind of a part in the community. And, uh, I mean, they're, they're going to step up. I, it doesn't even necessarily have to be paid. Yeah. Like they're, they're invested, you know, but, uh, yeah, I would say leverage the community that you have and like give them a little more autonomy. Yeah, I love that. And it's, uh, I have heard that tip before, so it's great. You can give people that. And again, if you don't want to maybe pay someone, 
um, you identify those MVPs and you can do some kind of value exchange where you know, you're going to do something for them um, on an ongoing basis and they'll help you manage the community or whatever that might be. And honestly, to them, it might just be because they want to, I don't, and the might be a better way to say it, but not ride on your coattails. But, you know, if they want to be involved in the community and get themselves established, they might be willing to do it for free. Um, yeah. You know, I, I know a number of people I've interviewed on this show before um, who work very, have their own companies, but then work extremely close with their influencers. Um, you know, Jeremy Montoya is by chance. He works with Brian Harris pretty closely. Um, and he's got his own business too on the side. So it's a very smart thing. He's involved in Brian's community, but then also has his own thing going as well and kind of can feed off of both. Yeah, I would also say uh, uh, regular content, you know, keeping things fresh. Yep. Like a community is not, especially if we're talking paid, like it's not passive income. Uh, you really do have to to actively invest. Uh, there, you can plan things out. You can schedule things out. Um, but, you know, just I wouldn't think of it as passive or I think your your income and just how engaged and active the community is going to be will reflect your involvement and your right. investment. Something that's worked really well for us is just uh, keeping the live engagement up. You know, in our case, we really do. We do a lot of we do probably several live events a week, which I know is a lot, uh, you know, time wise for people. But, you know, we have a very active and engaged community to, to show for it. Yeah, that's awesome. So we're pushing up close to a half hour here. I want to respect your time. So the last thing I'll ask you, and you touched on this right now, um, you mentioned a paid community you know, versus a free community. Now, I would think that people want both, and then your free community can feed into your paid community. Um, but a lot of people, they want to go launch a membership site and make a whole bunch of passive income. So you know, what would you say to those people? Free is more important first, right? Like build that community first. I guess the way I would describe it is build your audience first okay. and then go to a, a paid community. Now, if you find yourself with a free community, it's not necessarily a bad thing. Um, but, you know, there, there are some downsides, like people who pay for things are going to be more invested. Right. Uh, you will have more serious people, maybe a little bit less trolls, um, <laughs> certainly a lot more revenue, right. uh, which, is, which is pretty cool. Um, my, my tip for going from a free community to a paid community is to, it, it, this is tough. People don't like this, but I'm just going to put it out there. You know, you can, you can run with it if you like it or not. Um, I would close the free when you open the paid. And what I would do is, you know, say you got your five or 10,000 free Facebook group people, you know, you're not going to get all of those into paid customers. Right. Maybe, maybe you can get, you know, like we talked about, 2% is an average conversion, but let's let's bring the average up. I think you can get 5% of those free people to become paid members. And, and this is the way you do it. You give them a loyalty rewarding rate or an introductory rate. Yep. So you say, hey, we're launching this new thing and this is how it's going to be better. This is what we're, we're going to be doing. This is how we're going to be able to serve you, give you more. Um, and this is the price point. However, for the first X amount of time, because you've already been a member of our group, we want to give you this loyalty rate to you. We're going to grandfather you in for life, right. you know, and you basically start with this huge like wave and this base group that you build off of. Um, and I think if, if you're able to pull that off effectively, it, it can be really successful. It can give you a lot of momentum and right off the bat, you've got a pretty substantial chunk of recurring revenue. Yeah, I love that. And, you know, I think, too, for viewers watching, know that that is just one option. You can build a free community and, of course, digital courses, um, your own services, anything else you could sell. Um, but, of course, paid membership sites are a beautifully, you know, great way to make some money on a consistent basis um, and really get a commitment of a community behind you. Um, the last thing you know, I'll kind of say on you know, the power that I've seen in communities, and it's really interesting, I'm involved um, in a group called the Entrepreneurship Alliance online, uh, and those guys own a software company called Proof. So it's um, basically like little uh, pop-up notifications, so when people opt into your site, like, oh, this person opted in an hour ago. Um, so they got ripped off by some guys in India, like the name, the, all this stuff, um, and they sent them a cease and desist letter, all this didn't work. So 
Uh, and then these guys are leaving bad reviews and like trying to just take down their brand. So he went to the Entrepreneurship Alliance, his community that he had built, and he said, guys, this is what's up. Let's show them the strength of this community. I mean, they literally trolled this guy's business pretty hard. Like we gave his, uh, our guys uh, proof, like all five-star reviews to counteract the one-star reviews they were leaving. You know, people were like going to his page and saying some pretty interesting things. So it was crazy. That, that might not be wow. going to sick people on someone necessarily, but... Um, you know, when push came to shove in this, he had his community to back him and like, no, you guys are, everyone called this person out. You're ripping us off and you can't do that. So, you know, wow. it was pretty interesting to see that, how you can have that community back you online in such a strong way too. And I'm sure that feeling, you know, is pretty incredible to have that behind you. Yeah. It's so good to have that. And, you know, this is also tough to realize, but I, I've, I've just experienced it. And I've heard people say it, but it doesn't feel real until you really experience it. You know, you're going to have people who are detractors. You're going to have people who hate you. Yep. And it's just it's just an indication that you're doing you're doing something that that actually matters out there. Like, I, I don't think you can do work that matters and not be hated because it just means you're not resonating. You know, if you're so watered down that nobody hates you. How can anyone really love you? Like, what do you stand for? You know, and so uh, understanding that it just comes with scale. There's no YouTube video, no matter how positive, that has millions of views that doesn't have nasty comments, right? Yeah. It's just, it's a pure scale thing. Well, I love uh, this Expert Secrets book. It's a lot of great points in there. Um, but he talks about, you know, the difference between, you know, mainstream and crazy and then, you know, being somewhere in the middle um, because if you're mainstream, you're watered down, no one cares. If you're crazy, no one's going to listen to you. But if you're prolific, and you're right there in the middle, you're going to have people love you, but you know you're doing something right because people are going to, some people will hate you because you are hitting those pain points they don't really probably want to truly admit is wrong or they just don't believe that they're capable of doing whatever it is you're doing. So, yeah, I, I like that point, man. Don't let those people keep you down because it's not even worth your time. It's so hard to remember, you know, and, and like when you're in that moment and people are saying like terrible things about you, I've had it. I mean, like it's crazy, man, especially like if you if you're in business, I mean, if you're in business, you sell something. And as soon as you put a price tag on something, people get mad, especially the freeloaders. You know, they've been enjoying the free lunch and it's like, how dare you sell something? You know, you're you're a snake oil, you know, like you, <laughs> you sold out, uh, like, yeah. oh, but, but they'll say like crazy things. I mean, I've had people say like, I hope you get cancer and die. And it's like, that's wow, terrible. You know, like, yeah. like, but, but you, you know, and that's when I, I remember people saying things like, it's not you, it's them. And, and that never felt like more of a platitude than when I'm experiencing it. I'm like, what do you mean? Like, that doesn't make me feel any better. Uh, but like after a few weeks have gone by and I look back, I'm like, you know what? Like, that's totally the case. Like these people are, they're hurting, they're going through something. And I've even had people reach out after they say something terrible and they're like, I'm really sorry. I was having like a bad week and stuff was happening to me and I took that out on you. Like someone actually followed up and apologized and I was like, wow, wow. like, like it, it really just showed me that, you know, don't, don't worry about it. Like they're, they're going through stuff. Yeah, can't help that for sure. Well, listen, man, there is so much great advice in this interview. I am really excited to get this out to everyone. Thank you so much for your time, man. Uh, and everyone, thank you for watching. This has been Laptop Empires, episode 17. We'll see you guys next time. Thanks for having me, Brian.